Am I going to continue to have faith during that time? Am I going to be courageous and and brave and keep putting the next foot in front of the other one step at a time? Or am I going to swirl down into those questions? Because we can all do that so easily and and get stuck there. And it is courageous to take a step out of that when you're not feeling it. Hi, friends. Welcome to the Talk It Out podcast. We are always glad that you're here because you know what? You are one of the girls as well. And sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends, and that is what we do here. We talk through the Word of God, and we really see how it applies, how real it is, and how it makes such a difference when we dig into what God's Word says about who we are. Today, we're talking about being brave. We're talking about courage. So we're so glad that you're here with us. I'm Ginger Stocky, Aaron Cluley. Is oh. my lovely friend on the podcast oh, always. That's nice. And our other beautiful friend with us here today is Kaylee Fletcher. Kaylee, we are we are super glad that you're here I with us. I'm so excited to be here. You're one of my favorite people. Oh, I just love you guys so much. That's how she told me about you. She said, meet Kaylee. <laughs> She's one of my favorites. It's true. I said, we well, always have I don't such know, a good time. And um, yeah. it's just always a good time with you. So well, the, the funny thing is. Kaylee is one of our medical outreach coordinators. Mm -hmm. So we very rarely see each other here in the United States. (laughs) (laughs) This is true. It's very (laughs) rare. It's almost always in some other country. Uh And Kaylee is working hard with these wonderful volunteer teams who are just amazing Mm -hmm. and helping so many people. And then we come in and we get to see what Mm -hmm. they're doing and we have so much fun. But we're usually coated in sweat (laughs) and mud or we're being rained on yeah. and so you know so the scene it's each other, always like something. this is a little different yeah. i wasn't sure if you'd recognize me <laughs> same i was like i don't know about this <laughs> I, I even wore fancy lady shoes so that you knew that, <laughs> that you knew how to dress up right? exactly she, it's not just the hiking boots right you fancy, know? Lady the fancy lady shoes fancy lady shoes Obviously, you can tell I don't wear them much when I call them fancy lady shoes. <laughs> I'm going to start calling all my uh, yeah, heels I was going to say, I'm going to start using that. Like, I love it. She walked in this morning down the hallway. It was it was really quiet, and I was the only one in there. And I hear her tapping. I said, you sound powerful today. And she walked a little faster. <laughs> and I said, oh, no. You know, it's not, those fancy lady shoes. Not yes. what we're going for. <laughs> yeah. But... Kaylee is such a great example, if, oh, if, you. if you don't mind my throwing that out there, <laughs> of being brave and having courage and doing what God asks you to do, mm-hmm. even when it's not easy, because I know it could not possibly have been easy for you at, at all the different times to do what He's called you to do. Mm-hmm. With what you're doing with these medical teams, yeah. You are um, one of the people who lead the teams. Mm -hmm. And so you're responsible for this relatively large group of people. I mean, isn't it usually like 30-ish people? Yeah, we usually take like a max of uh, 40 people and then... um, Hmm. But it's usually around like twenty to thirty. Yeah, so. a lot of people. Yeah, to wrangle, but and it's it, in a it foreign is. country. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. You never know. You've got yeah. stories, girl. I know you've got stories. <laughs> the stories are never ending. <laughs> Not bad. Is it stressful, or do you kind of thrive in that environment of, I of chaos? Thrive. Do you? In it. Yeah. It sounds crazy you to can think see like it. she does. You yeah. know. Let me just jump in here and get it done. And yeah. it, I find it so fun, like the anticipation of like mm-hmm. not knowing what's coming next, mm-hmm. but like being there in it and like, yeah. okay, like we got to take care of this or we got to do this or, you know, mm-hmm. you just never know. And it's, it's crazy to think about, but yeah. it's Finding so solutions. Fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like, what fire can we put out today? And we you just go and for Ashley it. And, and all the people who lead these teams yes. are they're just, you guys are just both so good good at that. And yeah. even before that, mm-hmm. you you were working in Haiti. Yes. And I, I know how rough <laughs> that can be, not like you do, obviously. Right. <laughs> but, you know, that that also is a situation when you're completely taken out of your comfort mm-hmm. zone 
And here you are. You're. Can, am I allowed to say? I just asked her today how old she was because I didn't know for sure. But um, a thirty-year-old single woman mm-hmm. doing these things that most people would look at you and think, "Well, she's she's just completely comfortable, made to do that. She doesn't have to be brave." Hmm. Is that true, or is it hard sometimes? It's very hard. You know, every day, no matter what the task is, mm-hmm. I'm like, "Lord, you have to guide me," because. If I would have chose, huh. this would not be my life, you sure. know, but like falling into the will of God and really stepping out into not only like being brave, but also like the faith that you have in the Lord. And um, there's no way that I could I could step into this without Him. So it's not, oh, you know, she's made for that, whatever, yeah. whatever people may think. Everyone has their own opinion. Um, it's more of like, the Lord has called her to do this Mm. and she is stepping into it. And that's with anyone who has um, a position in ministry or whatever it may be, you know, Mm -hmm. like moms or exactly whatever. I think about the single moms, like, Mm. you know, they're not wanting to step into that lifestyle of being a single mom or um, Mm. doing everything on their own. But It's what's set before them, and they know that they have to prosper Mm -hmm. and raise their children up and do what's best for them, and that's that's for all of us. I think that's good as we start this conversation because it is easy to see somebody who has such an interesting life that does look so brave think, that's just, like you said, the way she was made, and I'm not like that, so I can't do that. (laughs) But it, it is a choice. And I think, I think that's so important. It reminds me of uh, somebody said on social media, Caribbean Q, I hope she's from the Caribbean because that's lovely. <laughs> um, she says, the result of courage isn't always success. To me, bravery means faith. I'm in a season of my life mm-hmm. now where I was brave, stepped out in faith. Now I'm sitting in God's presence waiting to see what success is to Him. Mm-hmm. And I think that's such mm-hmm. a great yeah. way to start that conversation yeah. that it isn't, yeah. it's having faith. If our right. bravery comes from Christ and it's because we're following Him, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. a, it's something that's relatable for all of us. Right. That's a great way to look at it because yeah. part of being courageous or being brave is not knowing what the outcome's going right. to be. Right. right. Yeah. And so she's waiting to mm-hmm. see what that yeah. will be. And that's where all of us are at different phases. Mm-hmm. Yeah in our life. So when you guys hear, we're, we're going to get to Joyce talking about this in just a minute, but when you guys hear the word brave or mm-hmm. what, tell me what you think of, is it important to be brave? Is it difficult? Um, why do we have to be brave? You want to go for it? Well, my answer <laughs> is silly. So sure. Well, let's hear it. <laughs> I will no start silly answer. <laughs> well, uh, the first thing I think of is a Disney princess because Maybe that's just because that's how I grew up. And so mm-hmm. bravery is a princess who saves the day because she's the, the hero in the story, not the prince who comes to save her. It's the girl. But she's portrayed in so many movies as someone who is, like I think of Anna and Elsa and Frozen. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they are women who are taking charge and they're running in the wilderness and they're saving the day. Right, and right. There's so many stories like that. They're letting it go. They, yeah. <laughs> While, meanwhile, <laughs> their hair is just blowing right. behind oh, yeah. them, and they look beautiful. <laughs> but but that's kind of the the bravery yeah. aspect that I've always thought of, and it's so different than reality. But well, that's like a cool, different perspective. I, I don't like, think it's I would, right. Well, it's no, not a good like one. it's like I would never <laughs> think of it that way. Yeah, don't. But, <laughs> but you I'm say thinking, it's not no. reality. So what? Tell tell us how you see it differently then. I think that like that's, that's what young girls are told. Yes. yes. Yeah. It goes gotcha. deeper. It's a deep thing. I think that's what I was taught. Yeah. Through what I saw through yeah. the through the world. Yeah. And what I saw as a grown lady who wears sometimes fancy shoes, <laughs> I think bravery is so much more about even the small things that we're brave about. Mm-hmm. So I said yes to um, having that hard conversation with somebody. Mm. That's yeah. really brave. Yeah. yeah. So it isn't that I'm taking charge, running through a forest. Right. With a yeah. machete in my hand and <laughs> the saving somebody or something. It's mm-hmm. it's what are the small things and it's yes. following the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's right. brave. Yeah. So to me it is a, an in an inaccurate representation mm-hmm. representation I had of bravery. Mm-hmm. And now I'm finding out what it actually means. Yeah. I like it. It makes a lot of sense. I do. So I what's like yours? It. Mine, when I think of brave and being brave, I my mind automatically goes into stepping into something that's uncomfortable. 
um, mm-hmm. whether it be a hard conversation mm-hmm. or um, for some people it's getting on a roller coaster that someone's pressuring them to do, you know, like, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, or it might be um, stepping out in faith mm-hmm. and doing something that you can't see is going to come to fru- fruition right now, but having the hmm. faith that it will, you know, like just stepping into something that's uncomfortable. That's where yeah, that's good. the word brave kind of like mm-hmm. falls for me. Well, yeah. let's see what Joy says and yes. we'll, we'll kind of dig into how it's described in the Bible. Yes. And then we'll talk more about how it applies to all of us mm-hmm. and how we can get there. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the goal. It's how to be brave in a healthy way mm-hmm. that that God is saying, I'll help you get there. Yes. Back around, I guess, November of last year, I was watching a television program and I heard somebody say, now it wasn't a, wasn't a Christian program, they weren't trying to make a Christian comment, but I heard them say, all things are possible. And uh, it just kind of blew up inside me when they said it and I thought, that's our word for next year. And I felt like that God kind of gave me an assignment to stir people's faith up by just preaching on it and encouraging you to step out and stop trying to just live in that safe, comfortable zone all the time. We need to be brave and bold and courageous and step out into whatever God calls us into, even if we don't understand what it is that God is doing. And even if you're not positive, you're gonna succeed because you'll never find out if you can succeed if you're not willing to take a chance on failing. Amen. You know, we're always asking, I mean, this sounds good, all things are possible with God. You know, the TV program didn't say with God, but of course I added that because that's the scripture. It's easy to say all things are possible with God. But most of the time, we think that means that we're just gonna sit back and do nothing and watch God do this big miracle. And I tell you, that sounds so nice, but it's usually not the way that it happens. And here's the reason why. We are partners with God. We have a part and he has a part. Our part is to believe to be in faith, God's part is to do what we cannot do, and our part is also to do anything God asks us to do, to cooperate with whatever it is that we are asking God to do for us. So you nailed it. Mm-hmm. You <laughs> you said to be uncomfortable at times to move into those situations, and God certainly does call us to do that. Yeah, yeah. and it's scary when that happens. It's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't like it. I don't particularly. Either. Like you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so uncomfortable. Uh-huh. And, you know, I think of when I was going to Haiti, and um, I had went and interned there for like two months. And um, on my last week, they had asked if I wanted to come full time. And I was like, "Uh, yeah, like my heart was just drawn there. And um, the whole story behind it is just the Lord already. And I already knew the Lord was working. And um, so instantly I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to call my parents and tell them. And um, I'm like, no, this has to be like an in-person conversation. Yes, it does. (laughs) And um, I just remember uh, going home and and telling my parents and my family. And I remember it so clear. Um, I lived at home at the time. Mm-hmm. And my mom, she's amazing, like, and always. But I was sitting at uh, the kitchen bar, and she was on her hands and knees, and she's cleaning the floor with a rag. Like, that's just what she did. She wanted to make sure it was clean. And <laughs> I love I was, that. I know, right? <laughs> I don't do that, but I love that she does that. I love that she, she does. Just like, I mean, my whole life, she's always done that. But um, she was down there, and she's cleaning, and I was like, Mom, you know, I, I've decided I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to move to Haiti full time. And I just remember her, like, down there on her hands and knees crying. Mm. And in that moment, like my heart hurt because me and my mom are so close and like she's really been a rock my whole life. Mm. And um, 
like I suffered really bad with anxiety growing up. Like I wanted to be wherever my mom was at all times. Mm -hmm. And so by making this decision, I'm like, of course, you know, the enemy is coming in and is like, you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to miss your mom. You'll last maybe two weeks, all this stuff. And I I suffered with it so bad because I'm like, you know, he's not wrong. (laughs) Like I have suffered with this and it's very, very hard. Um, Don't you hate that when (sighs) the enemy brings up those things? Because he's, you know, he's so good at that. He knows right where to... He doesn't tell you the things that that you haven't already experienced to know that is a possibility, you know? So what a bold thing for you to decide to do. Yeah. And I just remember, you know, laying in my bed that night and weeping Mm -hmm. and just being like, you know, God, I have your peace in this because I know it's you. Mm -hmm. Um... But I really need you to do a big work in me Mm. um, because I'm very, very uncomfortable right now. I don't know where my money is going to come from. I don't know where my insurance is going to come from. I don't even know where I'm going to (laughs) live. But like I I just remember the feeling of like peace, but also feeling so extremely uncomfortable in the unknown. But then seeing like how the Lord had really shown out. I mean, with a place to live, with unexpected mm-hmm. people there to support you and fill you up. And, you know, that doesn't mean there's not challenging times, mm-hmm. but I just think, wow, if I wouldn't have stepped out into what felt so uncomfortable, my life would be completely different. Yeah. And I would not have the overwhelming blessings mm-hmm. and um, be so filled up with the Spirit like I do now. And it's just that one moment that I clearly can remember so well yeah. of feeling so uncomfortable. But that one step affected your whole life. My whole life. Like if we aren't brave in like yeah. taking the one step, right. how much would we miss out on? So much. I was thinking this morning, I thought, what's the difference between being brave or being dumb? Because I ask that question all the yeah. time too. I know, me like, too. Maybe this isn't stupid. Maybe I'm just brave like really or stupid. Yeah. Right. I'd like, like to think brave. If I really want to do something, <laughs> I'm so brave. <laughs> but sometimes it's, that's not it. So I thought, how how do you know? And I it's it's like what you're saying. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's kind of well, not kind of. He is our guiding force. Mm-hmm. So if we ask Him to lead us. Yeah. I believe that peace will come. Right. I think sometimes yeah. it's confusing. You have to kind of work through mm-hmm. yeah, what your absolutely. mind is telling you. But I think yeah. that's such a big part of it is to learn how, if if we can't trust him, then we can't be brave. Right. And stepping into that mm-hmm. and going in with a heart saying, I know, Lord, that you're going to do this mm-hmm. and proclaiming it and believing it and really stepping out with that sort of faith and I mean, bravery is right there with it. Yeah. You, Lord, I know mm-hmm. you're going to do this. And Lord, I know you're going to carry me through. Mm-hmm. Um, it fills you with a peace that, that you can only explain if you've done it, yeah. you know? And I know so many people who have not done so many things because they're like, well, what about this situation? What about mm-hmm. this situation? Yeah. All the what you ifs. Know, all the what ifs. Yeah. And it's like, what if you just stepped out and you did it? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it's it's a big learning curve as a Christian. Yeah. Because you can go day by day and just continue with what you have set in front of you, or you can step out mm-hmm. and do big things. Mm-hmm. Well, it probably didn't mean that you didn't have any of those moments that you missed your oh, family. Right. Oh, sure. Or the anxiety never came because yeah. you took the step and did what God right. asked you to do. Mm-hmm. No, there's always going to be moments. I spent, there was a week in particular that I can remember in Haiti. And I just remember like, I would get myself together to go out and to minister to people and to be with people and to do what I needed to do on a daily basis. But when I would get home at night, I would cry and cry and miss my family and just want to go back home. Um, But I knew I was right where God wanted me to be. And in those moments, it's the enemy trying to attack you, of course, and tear you down and get you out of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember there was a nurse that was working in Haiti as well. And um, 
I called her over and I was like, Barbara, can you just come pray with me? Like, come and, you know, we defeat the enemy right now and pray with me, pray with me. Like, I just need that support. Mm -hmm. And she came over and I was laying on the couch and I was just so upset and sad and anxiety, everything. Yeah. And she came and she held my hand and she prayed with me. And I just remember the peace that came over my body. Mm. Um, and it was just so encouraging, yeah. like to know that it matters who you surround yourself with. Oh, and yeah. to be able to have that person just come over and pray with me and hold my hand and tell me it's going to be okay. Right. Um, it doesn't make it easier to step out and be brave, but you have those people who are going to lift you up mm -hmm. and be there with you. Yeah, that's really important. Carry you through. Surround yourself with the people yes. who will yep. support courage yes. and not tell you what you can't do. Right, yeah. right. Will lead you closer to God right. instead of saying, are you sure? Right. Yeah. You know, Aaron, when you said that, is it brave or is it stupid? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think about I think about that a lot because you know, I I like adrenaline. You know, mm -hmm. you a, do a little bit, not <laughs> so much, <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> so I I think of things that that I've enjoyed doing. You yeah. know, like like paragliding or swimming yeah. with sharks or skydiving and loving doing those things. Mm -hmm. But to me, those things, it's not bravery for me. I thought I was curious. Do you, yeah. Do you define those as brave or what is brave to you? So do do I think maybe they're stupid sometimes? You know, so far so good. <laughs> but, <laughs> and I I've enjoyed it. I relate to you so much on this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad, you know, that yeah. God's let me do those things. But is it courage or bravery? I, I don't huh. know. I think... I think there's so much more courage and bravery in those things that are the little things that are hard to do, like we were saying yeah. earlier, to show my weakness, yeah. to be vulnerable and risk a relationship with mm -hmm. a friend who may not reciprocate, yeah. you know, to do those things that God is asking you to do that may not risk life and limb. And of course, sometimes bravery consists of things like that, big, sure. hard choices, right. but it's it's not jumping out of an airplane, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. It, it is the everyday life yes. things that I need God's help to be brave and step Absolutely. out in those areas. Like I think of tr trying to tell somebody about Jesus at the grocery store. Yeah. That was terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. That is a very brave step I take if I say something to them. And it doesn't, when you ask what does bravery mean to you, I wouldn't define it as that. But when you start thinking about it, it's those really small moments in the day that require you to know you can't do it in your own ability. Mm, I exactly. am, I, Aaron, am not capable of doing this by myself. Yeah. I need either God's strength or wisdom or courage to step out and do something that's not in me right. on my own. So yeah. I think knowing that, like recognizing that kind of gives me like a little bit of a like mm -hmm. pep in my step mm -hmm. just to know that I, that is brave. Yeah. That was brave what you just did there. Yeah. Right. And, and to kind of... Tell yourself that. Yeah. To, you know, thank you, Lord, for oh, yes. giving me that courage that I mm -hmm. needed at that time, mm -hmm. you know, but because He is our strength. Yeah. Yeah. And so looking at it differently, mm -hmm. I think sometimes we, we can talk ourselves down, you know, that's that's mm -hmm. not who I am. I'm not built for those kind of things. Oh, yeah. Well, Easy. that's okay. That's who God is. He is built for those yeah. kind of things. Right. And to get us there to help us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we're going to go back to Joyce because. The, the big question is, who, who am I? Who are you? Are you brave? Do you have the courage that you need? Well, the answer is God has put something uniquely purposeful inside of you, and He will bring out that courage. So let's see what Joyce has to say about that. In order to live courageously, and living courageously means that I'm going to learn to follow my heart. I'm going to take risks. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to step out and really work with the Holy Spirit to be not just okay, not just average, not just ordinary, but to be somebody who really makes a difference in the world. How many of you want to not just pass through here unnoticed, but you want to make a mark in the world and have people remember for a long time that you were here? Well, don't discount yourself and think, well, you know, that 
that's only for the people on the platform or the people on television. It's for every single child of God. God has something for each of us to do. We have a part to play. You have something that nobody can do as good as you can do it. And if you don't do it, it's going to hurt all the rest of us. You never will be as excited as you will be if you are really in the middle of fulfilling your destiny. Nothing can ever make you as satisfied and fulfilled as knowing that you're chasing after God with your whole heart. Amen? But fear is Satan's tool. Yes, it's from the devil. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear. Let's settle that. When you feel afraid, it's not God trying to tell you don't do that. That's not the way God works. God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. So when we feel fear, we can be pretty much assured that it's Satan trying to keep us from doing what God would have us to do or what would be the best thing for us to do. Or he may just be trying to make you miserable. The Bible says that fear hath torment. Fear brings torment. And I've even discovered that dread, which I believe is a very close relative of fear, can also bring torment. I try to practice in my life not even letting myself dread things. Don't dread going to the grocery store. Don't dread doing your dishes. Don't dread cutting the grass. Don't dread sitting down and paying your bills. Don't let that spirit of dread and fear get into your life. Know who you are in Christ. Know that you can do whatever you need to do through the strength of God that is in you and live with your head held up high, your shoulders back, walk strong and live courageously. It, it's great to get a little pumped up like that, it isn't is. it? You know? <laughs> just like stand up. Yeah. 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 We, we yeah, can do it. it. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's get away a little bit from Kaylee in the mission field mm -hmm. because I love to hear about Kaylee turning 30 and what are some of the fears that come up there? <laughs> and I only asked that because yeah. she told me that she wasn't expecting 30 yes. to hit her kind of the way that it did. <laughs> Let's talk about So this. what happened? <laughs> yeah, like I feel like I hit 30 and it's almost like a midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> like I'm like, okay, um, Lord, where's my husband? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am yeah. I ever going to have kids? Like I love kids. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is like, I have always pictured myself as a mom, you know, and as I turn 30, I'm like, I'm getting too old. Hmm. Um, kids might not be an option anymore. Oh my goodness. Am I ever going to find my husband? Hmm. You know, so it's, it's there. The fear sure. is there the, of like, the questions. just, okay, Lord, where is he at? Hmm. You know, um, I would love to have some kids <laughs> Yeah, and I want a family like, hmm just like anyone would, you know, I want to be able to go home and have that excitement of seeing my husband and hearing the kids run around. And I, when people say, oh my gosh, like, well, I live in an apartment and below me, I can always hear the little kids mm -hmm. running and I love it. Mm. I'm like, it's so cute. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what, Lord, that's just going to have to satisfy me right mm -hmm. now. You know, if that means living above some little kids that I hear running around, that's okay mm. because I love it. Yeah. And I, I can hear them laugh and giggle. And um, But then there's the side of me of like, but I want that too. Sure. You know, and totally. am I going to have that? Yeah. And, and you always find kids when you're out in the field. Oh, my goodness. At, on, it's like on the medical mission trips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are. It's my favorite. <laughs> like when moms are getting treated, I'm like, I'll take your baby <laughs> and I'll just hold the baby for a while until yeah. she's done. And yeah. So how do you deal with some of those fears of the future of not knowing what, what the future holds yeah. and if you're, you know, when this will happen and what it will look like? Well, for me, um, I've found crazy peace. <laughs> um, if it happens, wonderful. That sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Does. it? Just crazy peace. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I don't know how else to explain it because yeah. for the, for a good while I was just 
restless, Mm -hmm. restless with the Lord, restless with life, restless in knowing um, what's next, Mm -hmm. Um, just so uncomfortable as we have talked about, but also like not in a good way, Mm -hmm. feeling uncomfortable of like questioning the Lord, like, hey, you know, like I'm here, but in time of prayer and fasting and spending that time with the Lord, He has given me a peace Mm -hmm. that I cannot even explain, really. Like, I'm okay if I don't get married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course I want it, but I'm completely happy if I'm not. Yeah. Like, I have great friends. I have great family. I have nieces. I have nephews. Like, my friends' kids, I will just pick them up and go do stuff for the day. Like, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. It's... It was hard to accept that, Mm -hmm. but it's also kind of like you turn it around and you're like, yeah, like all of that life, like not having responsibility of having to take care of little humans, you know, like (laughs) that's okay. I'm okay with that. And so getting to that point of having that peace of no matter what, Mm -hmm. God is going to sustain you. Mm -hmm. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. It might not happen now. It could happen 10 years later. And whenever it happens, if it doesn't happen, I'm okay because I have the Lord. And that's what I really rely on. That's a courageous thing it is, it for really all is. of us. What you know, it, it might be something different in all of our lives. Yeah. yeah. But to have that satisfaction mm-hmm. in knowing that God's plan is good. Yeah. yeah. And that He's working in ways we don't always mm-hmm. see. It's so true. And just, you know, I battled with it in my twenties um, a lot. And then when I hit thirty, I was like. I have to get this together. (laughs) Like, Lord, am I not putting in the effort? You know, like, I feel like stepping out in faith is a big thing. Like, if you want something, God's not going to do it for you. You know, you have to do your part as well. And so I'm like, am I putting myself out there? You know, all these things. He'll do the part that he has to do. Exactly. But he wants you to to go out in faith and know yeah. that it's going to happen and put yourself out there and and he will bring that right person sure. one day and um but when i hit 30 it hit me really hard <laughs> i was like oh my goodness um what what do we do now yeah. and so it's still it's an everyday thought like am I okay with Mm -hmm. not getting married or Mm. dating until I find the right one? And I am. I'm okay either way. Are there days where you're not okay? Because I like what you said, Mm -hmm. that it's an everyday thought. It's an everyday thought. Like you're probably having to choose that. Are there days where it doesn't feel so easy? There's days. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's days where I'm like, I I get a little down Mm -hmm. and quiet Mm -hmm. and I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Mm. You know, where, where are you, Lord? Yeah. I can't feel you. I can't hear you. Um, you're not speaking to me. Where are you? Yeah. And in those times, it's so hard and it's so emotional. Yeah. And um, sometimes being quiet is the best thing you can do. Mm-hmm. And... That's where I've really learned, you know, I might not be able to feel him. I not Mm -hmm. might not be able to hear him, Mm -hmm. but he's there and he hears me. And he hears my aches and my pains and what's um, hurting my heart. And that is encouraging Mm -hmm. for me. Does it make it easier in the moment? Not really. Not really. But it's having that foundation with the Lord where you're like, he hears me, mm-hmm. even though I can't feel him yeah. or hear him right now. And so, yeah, those days are very hard. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's it's something that comes to my mind every day. Yeah. And some days it's easier to be like, I know the Lord's got this. Yeah. You know, I'm in the palm of his hand. And then there are some days where it's like, are you here, Lord? Yeah. You know, like, do you see me? Mm-hmm. And I think that's easy for mm-hmm. all of us to get stuck in that mindset yeah. of, yeah. He doesn't hear me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to have kids. I'm just going to have to listen to these kids running around below me the rest of my life. You know, it's so easy Mm -hmm. to get stuck in that mindset. And I I suffered with it for many years, many years. It was just like I couldn't see the positive. I could only see the negative. Mm -hmm. And 
working on yourself and transforming yourself and leaning into the Lord, it does get easier. Yeah. It's not always fun, mm -hmm. but you always know that He's there and He's going to carry you. I think that's such a good perspective because whether it's whether you're waiting for the, for the season that you're in, where you're mm -hmm. waiting for marriage or kids or whatever it is we're waiting for, yeah. I have always felt like I'm doing something wrong if I have a day where I I don't feel hopeful, and I yes. or I feel afraid that this yeah. thing is never going to happen. I am. Right. Then I'm not brave, and I should yeah. just throw it in a towel because I can't do it. Yeah. But to hear you say, "No, there are still some hard days." Oh yeah. You don't. You're not quitting. Right. You mm -hmm. just. You know where to lean into on mm -hmm. those days that are hard, and then you just keep going. Yeah. You just take another step the next day. I think that's so important for mm -hmm. us to remember because it's yeah. easy. Yeah. It could be easy to do, like you said. Yeah. I yeah. remember hearing about Mother Teresa going through a time like that, like a. Where are you, Lord? I'm not hearing anything from you, mm. time. Yeah. And you think, Mother Teresa, yeah. with what she's doing. And, yeah. and she had a long, dry time yeah. that she felt like she wasn't hearing the voice mm -hmm. of God and didn't see answers to yeah. some of the things yeah. that she was asking and was asking all those same questions that we all ask just in yeah. different ways. Mm -hmm. And to realize that she had to make the choice, and Kaylee has to make the choice, and I have to make the choice mm -hmm. to, am I going to continue to have faith yeah. during that time? Am I going to be courageous and, and brave and keep putting the next foot mm -hmm. in front of the other one right. step at a time? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to swirl down into those questions? Because yeah. yeah. we can all do that oh, yeah. so easily. and. And get stuck there. Yeah. And it is courageous yeah. to take a step out it of is. that yeah. when you're not feeling it. Absolutely. When you're doing your best to believe it. Mm -hmm. right. And so th I think that's one of the bravest things any of us I can do. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it feels really hard. Yeah. Like you're it does. going against the grain. Right. And it's important when you're having moments like that to feel it. Mm -hmm. To let yourself feel the emotion. Mm -hmm. To feel what you're feeling. Um, cause I know I got in the habit of suppressing it and then all of a sudden it's coming like a bomb mm -hmm. and I am a mess, mm -hmm. you know, because I had been pushing it down, pushing it down, you know, no, you're not allowed to feel that you're not, you're, you're a Christian, you're a believer. You can't yeah. think that way. You can't feel that. Yeah. Almost like but, don't, don't even say that. Right. Don't even it. think that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like that's really unhealthy. It mm -hmm. is. And a lot of people, um, a, a lot of Christians like find feeling those things as a weakness. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's not. It's it's something that everyone yeah. goes through. Yeah. And feeling it in the moment, it, it, it's key mm -hmm. to to living healthier and um, finding your purpose yeah. and knowing that God is still there. Yeah, that's good. Well, we're going to go back to Joyce one more time, and there's still a lot more to talk about. But um, one of those things about getting stuck in those questions and even stuck in the decisions and, and all those things that fear overcomes us, mm -hmm. Joyce is going to talk about the paralysis of analysis, how we can overthink and let ourselves spiral and get into a really difficult place. So listen to this, and we'll be back. David facing off with Goliath. My goodness, what kind of faith did that take? And it's worth it to go to 1 Samuel 17 and read that whole story and read it frequently and, and digest it and do it slowly because here, he's the most unlikely. He was so unlikely that they didn't even consider him. And his brothers were accusing him. And, but he was looking at God. He wasn't looking at himself. He wasn't even really paying that much attention to the giant. He was looking at God. And, and when you take time to read it, look, and, look at all the things that David was saying. I mean, he went in there saying, God is going to defeat you, and this day I'm going to cut your head off, and I'm going to give your carcass to you. I mean, he just like, he was calling those things that be not as though they were before he ever got there. And I love this. So he's facing off with Goliath. There he is. And verse 48 says, when the Philistine came forward to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. I love that, that he didn't think it to death. He just got on with it and got the job done. 
And I tell you something, we can get the paralysis of analysis. In other words, we just try to figure it out for so long that it's like, what, what was it, God, that you said you wanted me to do? We, can, we can't even, you know, we can't even remember what it was anymore that God wanted because we're, we've looked at Goliath for so long and, you know, we're just like, we think we got to, well, how, how's this going to work and what's God going to do? And, and God didn't even want him to use a regular weapon. He's going to supposed to do it with a slingshot and a handful of stones. So, I mean, if you really take the time to look at some of these stories in the Bible and realize they're not just stories, they're not just made up stories. These were people that existed and they had real faith in God, but they had doubt and they had things come against them and they had to see the circumstances and move on beyond that. And really, they're not any different than we are today. And I don't want to be somebody, you know, you, you can look at the doubters in the Bible and the people who didn't obey God and they're on one or two pages and then they disappear. I want to be one of the ones that's there in the end of the book. Amen. I want to be one of the ones that finished and, and made it and saw the reward of standing strong and firm with God. Let me tell you something. Hanging on to God may get difficult at times, but wow, you're going to be so glad when he splits the eastern sky that you didn't quit and give up. David ran quickly toward the battle line. And then there's another great example when uh, the 12 spies went into the promised land and they came back out and 10 said, oh no, there's giants in there. They are big, man. They are big giants. I mean, they carried out the fruit. The fruit was phenomenal. It was so big, they had to carry a bunch of grapes on a pole to get them back. You'd think that would be impressive. Why is it that we're more impressed with our doubts and the things that we see wrong with us than we are God? They said, well, yeah, the, the, the fruit is good, but boy, the giants are big. We are not able, they said. We are not able to go in and take the land. And here's what Caleb and Joshua did. Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to conquer it. Here again, they didn't waste any time. Come on, don't stand around looking at the giants. Get up, let's get going. Let's do what God wants us to do. Amen. And I had to do that so much in the early days of my ministry, and I still have to do it at different times today. Just, just shut my eyes and go and believe that God's going to show up when I get there. Let me tell you something. You are never going to do much of anything if you don't take some chances and if you won't step out boldly. I always say step out and find out. If you find out that you stepped out the wrong way, then step back. I think it's so important to think about, I, I love that God gives us these type of examples in the Bible, because yeah. whatever our giant is, mm -hmm. we all have different giants mm -hmm. in our life, and they even change at different seasons of our life oh, yeah. what, what that thing is that is kind of sucking up all of our courage, you know, yeah. just feels like it's draining out of us mm -hmm. sometimes, and we need to be brave. I, I love what David said in 1 Samuel he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Mm -hmm. he, David didn't say, who's this giant thinking he can beat me, this, li yeah. this little man? He said yeah. he thinks he can defy the living mm -hmm. God yeah. because being brave is not about me. It's not about what I can accomplish. Mm -hmm. It's about God yeah. Oh, yeah. and what God can accomplish. Uh -huh. And even having the faith that if it doesn't go the way that I mm -hmm. think it will, that I can still trust God mm -hmm. to bring something good out of it. Mm -hmm. That's what being brave is. Yes. That verse you just said, it, it, it's like a good way to, to flip your perspective. Yeah. Because when, it, when you see it that way, yes. it does cause you to rise up because you know it's not about me. Yeah. It's, it's about him anyways. What is he going to do and how is he going to show up in the situation? That is so good to remember. That's so powerful. It is powerful. Well, to the, the whole thing about bravery can 
you can try to stir it up with pride. Mm. Oh, yeah. And Tried courage. That. Yeah, work. haven't we all? Me too. <laughs> then you fall down the stairs. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> courage can't come from pride. Mm-hmm. It has to come from the humility to say, it's all yours, God. Oh, yeah. It's not anything yeah. in me. Yeah. And wow, that seems to be the opposite of what the world tells us. It does. About oh, yeah. How to be brave. Mm -hmm. One of the verses that I love about this topic I wrote down was Acts 4, 13. It says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled and ordinary men, Mm -hmm. they were astonished and took note that they were with Jesus. And I thought, like, I'm just an ordinary lady. Mm -hmm. But but what made them special was that they spent time with Jesus. Yeah. And that people were seeing Jesus in them, not these two ordinary men. And... I, that's what I want to be like. Yeah. Like I don't want just one page in the Bible. I want to have that kind of faith where people can see that I've been with Him, and then they're distracted by whatever Aaron's doing. It's they're seeing the Lord. Right. Yeah. And I love how she says, like, you know, you can think of every single reason why you shouldn't oh, yeah. do it. Yeah. And, you know, but here's the Lord saying, "Step out. Yeah. Do it. Go for it." Mm-hmm. And. It, it's so easy to just get caught up in the, what if this, oh, or yeah. this will happen, yeah, or, you know, like just stepping out and doing it. And, yeah. and I feel like that's when you really see the Lord at work because you're really stepping out and you're really being bold and brave. And then when you see it come to pass, you're like, wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, it really draws you closer to Him. Don't you think too, like the more you do it, you kind of get some momentum. Yes. And so the, at first, That's it's cool. really hard. It's so hard. But then you do it, and you realize, oh, it, it worked. And it may yeah, not have worked right. the way you thought. Right. Yeah. You might have fallen down a little bit. Yeah. But then you got back up. But the more you take those steps, I yeah. think it is really yeah. so good and encouraging for our hearts because you so see good. the faithfulness of God mm-hmm. when you yeah. took that step. Yeah. You begin to realize that you can trust what He's saying. Yeah. 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 And that, that really is only experience that teaches you that. Mm-hmm. So if if people are really wanting some things to hold on to for their courage, there's just some verses that I love that help so much with this. Um, this one is Elisha, and he's... Yeah. he's Um, with another person. And it says, when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, alas, my master, what shall we do? And he said, do not be afraid for those who are with us are more than those who are with him. And it's just so much more about what we don't see. We can be brave even when our vision tells us this is a mess, mm-hmm. yeah. like how, when have we, when have we felt like there is no way out of this yeah, one? Right. But we can say no. God is bigger than what I am physically seeing inside of me. So mm-hmm. that's such a great one to hold on to. And then Psalm one twenty five one and two: Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains. Mm-hmm. Surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people, mm-hmm. both now and forever. Yeah. Just to know that we're surrounded yes. by Him in that kind of a stable, big right. mountain way yeah. is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, one more. Okay, here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> These are several verses from Isaiah 51, but it says, I, even I, am He who comforts you. What are you that you shall fear mortal men, that sons of men who are but grass, that you forget the Lord, your maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth? For I am the Lord, your God, that churns the sea so that, it, so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who Ooh. set the heavens in place. Okay, I'm sorry. When you hear that, it's <laughs> like... Right. <laughs> right? How can I yeah. dare no. to not have courage in that, mm-hmm. to to not be brave with that kind of support yep. and strength right. behind me? Yeah. yeah. One, it reminds me, it was a little Job-esque in there because I love it when he talks like that. Look what I've done. Look yeah. at, you don't have to fear because I have gone before you. I have put things in place for you. And yeah. 
you are in the palm of my hand. I, that's so good. I just it's, keep keep yeah. reading them all. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a good thing we to do. We want more. Yeah. When you are <laughs> scared or you need to take a step of faith, like writing down verses like you just said, oh, Andrew, yeah. and putting them in our phones or oh, by our bed. Everywhere. And just anywhere you can recite them over and yes. over, You need we need that inside of us. Mm-hmm. Kayla, you're amazing. Thank you. Aww. We love, love you guys. You. you were right. She <laughs> is great. I you didn't want to make my decision great. until we had this conversation, but I agree. Oh, yes. you no, guys but are I'm, the best. I'm so grateful for your transparency and yeah. your honesty in yeah. sharing this stuff. Yeah. And and like I said, being a great example, but also just being real. Yeah. And yeah, it, nobody's perfect. It's encouraging. And- we're all growing in our own ways, and how can you help others if you can't be transparent and let them see that we all struggle? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're all going through something. We're all fighting battles that people can't see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just believe that everyone's going to be a little bit braver today than you were yesterday and a little bit braver the next day than you were today because those situations that stir up that fear in us, those are God's opportunities to shine bright. Mm -hmm. So when you depend on Him, when you cling to Him and you say, yeah, I'm feeling some fear here, God, but I will trust you and I will step out Mm -hmm. and see what happens, God will show up big for you. And that is our prayer for you right now. We encourage you to go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. You can watch all of our other episodes. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Tell other people about it and just make sure you're bringing as many people in here to sit on our pink couch with us as we possibly can. We all need the encouragement and we need more of God's word in our life. So thank you guys. I love you too, Erin. I think you're wonderful too. Thank she you. Is. you you're very you. high on my favorite list. Oh, I'm very high. I'm not at the top list. Like you, but I'll take that. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, my favorite list has one great big row with a lot of people at the top. <laughs> there you go. That's smart. That's funny. Yeah. And you're all on it too. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk it out next time together. Bye bye. <laughs>